because a certain man there had suffered a deep or with paralytic for like eight years. When Jesus saw him, he laid there hope, helpless, knowing that he had already been there for so long in that condition. He said to him, do you want to become well? And the blind man answered, that's verse 7, I have no one, sir, I have no one to put me when the water is into the pool, when the water is troubled. Because while I'm trying to come myself, somebody else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your bed and walk. Instantly the man became well and recovered his strength and picked up his bed and walked. But what happened? That happened on a Sabbath. Now, child of God, I want to talk about a, how to come out of a long struggle of life. You know, um, sometimes people stay in a, the same situation for so long until they think that now this is where they belong, this is how they are supposed to be. Sometimes they stay in the same situation until they think that this is my life, this is how I'm supposed to be. But today the Lord has sent me to speak to you the word of God this very morning. That in whatever situation you have been for so long, you are coming out tonight, today in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, child of God, the Bible is talking about a man who was paralyzed for 38 years. And this man was waiting for the troubling of water because the Bible says that at a certain time of the day, the angel of the Lord used to descend from heaven and trouble the water. And the first patient to enter into the water was cured of any disease or sickness that he or she was going through. But this moment, when this man was seated there, Jesus happened to pass by. And when Jesus passed by, the Bible says, Jesus looked at him. He looked helpless. And Jesus asked him, do you want to be well? The man answered, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is troubled. Because when I'm trying to go there, someone else goes ahead of me. Child of God, you are not yet late. Now, child of God, listen to this. The world is governed by keys and principles that by applying them, you are able to come out of whatsoever you have been going through. You will agree with me that having a wrong key, you will stay on the door for a whole day without having access. But once you have the right key, few seconds will be able to access where you want to be. You realize that God also has some keys that he has given to us. That's what the Bible says that Jesus, when Jesus went to hell, he took hold of the keys. He took keys and gave it to you. So you have been given keys that when you, you open here on earth, things have opened in heaven. Now, child of God, God never created a failure. God never created as a, a poor person. God never created a, a, a successful person. God never created a weak person. God created human beings. But in one way or the other, some are successful, some are not successful. Some are sick, some are weak, and some are strong. God created a person and when he created you, he blessed you. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, that, and God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the folks of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. In other words, when God created you, you Look at the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 3. God blessed you already. Now, child of God, listen to me. You listen to me right now. Watch out. When God created you, he created you with everything that you ever needed. All your blessings were packaged. They were wrapped together. God will never create you, and then he leaves you without anything else. You can imagine a father who is so rich and wealthy with a son who is so poor and bankrupt. Now, I mean, I mean God created you with everything that you ever needed. Listen to what, what happened. When the enemy saw that God blessed you, God created you with a blessing and God blessed you, and the enemy hated you, the enemy brought all sorts of problems. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10, that a thief comes in but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundant. Hallelujah. Now, when the devil came in to kill, to steal, to destroy, he brought, he was the source of all the struggle, all the problems that we have been going through. Child of God, he came in with every evil, with every evil, with every pain, with every disappointment, with everything to make you 
to, for, to make you feel crushed down and going through issues. But child of God, listen to this. Today the Lord has sent me to speak to you because today is your day and you are coming out of the long struggle you have been through for so long. I don't care what you have been through. I know of one thing that the Lord I'm speaking to you today is right here ready to deliver you. Amen. Now, how do you come out of the long struggle you have been in through for so long? Number one, identify your problem. You can't take any medication before you confirm what kind of sickness you are going through. You must discover your real problem before you are able to understand the cure or the remedy for what you are going through. Child of God, many people do not understand exactly what they are going through. What are you going through? The Bible said that this man understood. He was paralyzed. And he said, Sir, I have no one to put me into the water when the water is troubled. Because when I'm trying to, somebody enters there ahead of me. Child of God, what is it you are going through right now in life? I don't know what you are going through. I know you are watching me wherever you are. Some of you, I know you are watching me and you are almost at the verge of giving up in life. You feel like quitting whatever you have been doing. You are sick. Someone is watching me on, or, or, or on hospital bed, sick. You don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. But I thank God because you have identified what you are going through. I know you understand exactly the problem. Because it's immediately you get the revelation of what you are going through. Your miracle comes right away. Hallelujah. Number two thing that you must do and you have to do is that go to your place of miracle. Now, child of God, there's another thing to know about what you're going through and another thing to stay, wait, stay put and wait for things to happen or things to take place. Now, listen, there are four levels that you can live in as a believer. Number one, a level of ignorance. Either you don't know or you know you don't want to know and you are assuming to live the same life of ignorance whenever you live a life of ignorance you realize you live a life of left behind you can't access exactly because anybody who doesn't know where he is going he can never get lost you don't know where you're going that means you are already you have already arrived child of god the people who are living a life of assumption in other words they are not doing anything but they are expecting things to change in their lives. Number three, living a life of tradition, whereby you are doing things the way you found them being done. Are you going to church because you found people going to church? Are you going there because your mom, your dad introduced you to church? Or is it because somebody told you to come to church and you don't know what to do? Are you living a life of tradition whereby you can't understand what's happening to your life? Because it's like the same thing that was happening to your parents, the same trend is now happening to you, child of God. The Lord has sent me here today to speak to you that your time is right here. Hallelujah. This man, he decided to go to a place of his miracle. Where did he go? He went to a place called Bethesda. Bethesda in Hebrew, it means a place of mercy, a place of grace, a place where, uh, a place of remembrance. Listen, wrong positioning will offer you denied permission or access to whatever area you want to go child of god as long as you are not positioned in the right place for example if i stay right here and i want to board a plane i cannot board a plane why i have to go to the airport your miracle is also connected to a geographical location there are some places as long as you stay there, you can be able to move to where the Lord wants you to move to have access to your miracle. I challenge you, child of God, you need to move from where you are. You have been used to the same place for so long. Some of you, the Lord has been calling you from where you are. You are not moving out. The Lord has been speaking to you to move out. You are not moving out. But today, I came to challenge you, child of God, move out of where you are to a place where the Lord can meet you. Hallelujah. You need to change your geographical. Move to a place of mercy. Move to a place of grace. Move to a place of your miracle. Move to a place. Discern your place of appointment. Child of God, many people discover their place of appointment and immediately they discover that their life changed. You can never remain the same once you enter into your place of appointment. Discover your place of grace. It is in the presence of God, in the presence of the Almighty, in prayers, in fasting, in seeking the Lord, in looking after Him. 
that is where we find grace. Hallelujah. And you know grace is God's unmerited favor to the undiscerning people. Once you enter to a place of grace, I can assure you, your life shall never be the same again. Hallelujah. Child of God, number three thing you need to do. Identify the miracle worker. Now, there's another thing about going to where Jesus is. But there's another thing about identifying Jesus as the miracle worker. The Bible talks of a lady who had an issue of blood for 12 years. And this lady, he heard that Jesus was around and he went where Jesus was. The Bible says, she went and touched the hem of the garment of Jesus. And the issue that she had stopped. There are many people who are touching Jesus, who are moving closer to Jesus. Some touched him by accident. Some, because the crowd, there was a crowd, some touched him purposely, like this lady touched Jesus purposely. And because she understood that this Jesus is not just Jesus, Jesus is the miracle worker, Jesus is the solution, Jesus is the one I needed. And therefore, I'm going to touch Jesus purposely with a discernment, with an understanding. And when this lady touched Jesus Christ, her life was never the same again. Child of God, I'm here today to challenge you, to speak to you, wherever you are. I'm not here about to, to preach about religion. Neither am I here to speak about myself. I'm here to speak about the King of Kings, about the Lord of Lords, about the Creator of the universe, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who established your life before it even began the one who understands where you are coming from and where you are going the one who holds the calendar of your life the one that whenever you have been disqualified whenever people feel like there's nothing good in you this one comes in and sets matters straight he settles your affair this man is jesus christ only jesus has a solution for your life child of god only jesus has a solution it doesn't matter what you have been given. It doesn't matter whether you have been sold things. It doesn't matter what you have collected. Listen, child of God, we are living in a generation where people believe in things rather than the Messiah. People believe in miracles rather than the miracle giver. People believe in things sold. People believe, believe, believe in stones. People are being sold everything. They are being sold oil. They are being sold oil. They are being sold brooms and all those. Listen, child of God, all these are trash. Nothing. No stone. No broom, no oil can save or deliver you. Only Jesus Christ, I'm speaking to you today, has the power to deliver you. Hallelujah. I don't know what you've been going through. Maybe you've tried all these things I'm talking about, and none of it is working. Hey, Charugu, listen to me. The power of the Almighty is invested in the name Jesus. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 15, verse 7, that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then... Ask for anything you want, it shall be done to you by my Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Child of God. The Bible never says that if you want this, you run here. No, 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 no. Jesus is the solution. He is the Alpha. Hallelujah. He's the miracle worker. No other person, every other God, they are man-made, they are artificial. All these other gods, they are created and they have no power. But Jesus is a miracle. Hallelujah. You need to understand Jesus, to have a deeper understanding. No one ever met Jesus and his life remained the same. Zacchaeus, a tax collector, this man, he was hated by people around. But when he met Jesus, his life changed. But Myers, the blind man, he used to beg by the roadside. But the Bible says that when this man heard Jesus was coming back, he shouted as, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And when Jesus met him, his life changed. Hallelujah. Look at Zac uh, 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 Lazarus. He was dead for four days. But when Jesus appeared, all things were settled. He resurrected again. He was raised up de from death. Listen, child of God, only Jesus can settle your matter tonight. Jesus can resurrect anything in you that had died, anything that you have been waiting for for so long. Only Jesus can deliver you from that. I know you are asking me how I've been, I've been praying to Jesus. Listen, child of God, I came here to bring to you the Jesus of Nazareth, this Jesus that people rejected, the Jesus that they killed all the babies looking for him to kill him. But they never kill him. 
because he was a deliverer and a savior. This Jesus, the same Jesus, who has the power to deliver. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. This Jesus, he saved me when I was still yet a sinner, when I did not know what to do, where to go, when I was confused. This Jesus entered my life and delivered me. This man, he sat at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. No miracle, nothing. You might be going to church for many years. You might be doing a lot of things for many years. But child of God, let me ask you, how many times have you relied upon Jesus for his salvation, for his deliverance? Child of God, tonight, today, I speak to you wherever you are watching me from. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how long it has been there, how long that situation has been pressing you, how long you have been sick and well and able to function properly. It doesn't matter how long your economy has been, uh, has been paralyzed, how long your marriage has been at the verge of, of, of breaking up. Maybe you have been thinking of quitting that family, you have been thinking of quitting that life. Your place of work has no peace. You can't understand what's taking place. But I came here to speak to you, child of God. I'm bringing to you Jesus of Nazareth, the only one, the only one, the only one, the Savior of the all universe. Hallelujah. This Jesus never, doesn't run out of power or ability to function. He is available today. Hallelujah. Number four means for you to access your miracle. It's about obedience. This man, when he was told, stand up, take your bed and go. This man never questioned Jesus. Look at this child of God. Behind the blessing that God has promised you in the Bible, there is an order of obedience. You find Jesus when he was healing the man who was blind. He spit on the ground, took dust and, and, and smeared on his eyes and told the man, hey, go to, the, uh, go, go to, uh, to, to rivers, uh, to Siloam and wash yourself. The Bible said that when this man was going, what happened? He realized he was seeing. Jesus said to the paralytic man, go and wash yourself. As they were on their way, obeying what they were on their way going, they found themselves clean. Miracles are also subject to obedience. How much are you able to obey God? Because lateness in obedience, it is a disobedience. The God you don't obey will never respond to your affairs. It's until you are able to obey Him to the last minute that God is able to manifest himself into your life. Child of God, this morning, the Lord is speaking to you. He's calling you. You have been living a life of yourself for so long. You have been living a life without Jesus for so long. I know you have been going to church maybe because you just need a miracle there. You have been going to church because you just want to access certain things. Listen, child of God, Jesus is calling to you right now. He said that if you hear my word, hey, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door for me, I will enter. I will eat with him. I will stay with him and he with me. Child of God, I don't know what you've been through, but today I want you to obey the voice of God that God is speaking to you right now, wherever you are. Don't sleep there and die there. Wake up. You are saying, I can't go to church. All the churches are the same. Churches are calling men. Pastors are calling men. Listen, child of God. You can deliver yourself. Wake up from your situation this morning. And start walking. Because today, after the prayers, I want you to practice that which you could not do before. As I'll be praying for you, I want you to stand up. If you are sick, I want you to stand up. Because the Lord is visiting you today, today, today. Because in a few moments, I'll be praying for you. Child of God, I don't know how your life has been. But I know of one thing. By obedience, the Lord will deliver you. Hallelujah. Number five, wait for the master for he is coming. Now listen, child of God. There are two kinds of time. Number one is what you call the chrono. Chrono comes from the Greek word uh, wrist. This is the time of man. Now, sometimes people think you are too late to access certain things. Some think you're too young to have certain things. Listen, child of God, there's a man in the book of Mark chapter 2. He was taken to where Jesus was and they found the hall was full. He could not, they could not access Jesus. Why? This man came in late, but this man said, I must see the master. He desired, he purposed to see the master. 
And this man, they say, Bible says, they opened the roof and they lowered this man to the feet of Jesus. Yes, according to the time of men, he was late. But now listen, child of God, there's another time called the Kairos. Kairos is the divine appointed time of God for you. Like right now, the Lord has sent me to speak to you because this is your day of deliverance. This is your day of salvation. This is your day of, of, of healing. This is your day of recovery. This is your day of restoration. Hallelujah. When the time of man comes to an end, Oh, child of God, the time of God comes in. The Bible says that weeping may go for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I don't know how your night has been. I don't know how people feel like you are late. Wait for the master. Jesus may look like he's late. Jesus will never be late. He knows the right time. He is coming. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming for you. Your situation is causing Jesus to come. Hallelujah. He is coming. Hallelujah. Child of God, listen to this. That... When you wait for the right time of the Lord, the Lord God Almighty will visit you. And today is your day. This man stayed there for 38 years. He never knew that today Jesus will be coming for me. But praise be to God. Hallelujah. Jesus came in and he healed him. Number four. Sorry. Number six. Discover the God sent for you. Every miracle is wrapped in someone. Now look at me. Look at this. When, God, when the Israelites were praying to God for, for, for deliverance, when they were in Egypt, Jehovah God did not go to Egypt. He went into the medium to look for Moses, to come and deliver them. So your miracle is already wrapped in someone here today. The miracle you are looking for, the things you are looking for, they are already in somebody. Somebody has what you have been looking for. Child of God, whatsoever you are looking for, Someone is carrying that for you. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 9 that when Saul was living, when was going to Damascus, the Bible says on the way the Lord struck him and then he became blind and he, be, uh, he could not walk. The Lord, led him, the Lord sent someone to lead him to the city. He entered into the city but he was blind, he could not see. But the same, same God who did that could not come and deliver him from whatever he was going through. He sent Ananias to come and pray for him for his healing. Listen, child of God, your miracle is with somebody. And today, the Lord has sent me here to speak to you. Life, your spirit man must receive life today in the name of Jesus. I don't care what you've been going through. I know of one thing. The Lord will serve is able to deliver you. You must be able to discern the God sent angels to your life. Many of you, the Lord has sent people to you. But you have not been able to discern them and to know who they are. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to this very moment. But I know the Lord is sending an angel to your life in the name of Jesus. There are people being sent all over the world to come and meet your needs. There, in other words, there are people you meet in life. Your prayer life changes. Your situation changes. Your life changes. And Jesus is sending that person into your life today. This man was there for 38 years. But when Jesus arrived, oh hallelujah, his situation changed. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. But I know one thing. Some of the things you are going through today, you are going through them the last time. You never hear about them anymore. You never see them anymore. Because the Lord is here to deliver from your long struggle. I'm speaking to a child of God who is in the hospital bed, who is at home but is sick, unable to walk, unable to move, unable to do anything, unable to function, unable to produce. You don't know how to pay what you are going to do. You don't know how to pay your house rent. You don't know what you are going to do right now. You are in a confused status. Or maybe you are believing on behalf of somebody. I don't know where you are watching me from. But listen, child of God, in whatsoever you are going through, I come here to bring to you good news that Jesus Christ who did for this man, he is also able, ready to do it for you. He did for this man who was paralyzed for that eight years. In other words, your situation is not so hard, so difficult for Jehovah God to perform it. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh, or all man. Is there anything too hard for me? No. There's nothing too hard for him. The book of Mark chapter 10, verse 27, the Bible says, with men it's impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. 
Luke 18, 27, the Bible says, What's impossible with men, it is possible with God. This morning, child of God, I'm bringing to you good news. I'm bringing to you the word of the Lord with the power to deliver you, to heal you, and to save you. And listen, child of God, wherever you are watching from, I know you are saying, man of God, what do I do? Very simple. Today, receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Start the journey with Him. He is the author of your life. Your life is in the hands of Jesus. Start a relationship with the Savior. He has been looking for you. He has been waiting for you. Child of God, last year you are not born again. The other year you are not born again. Again this year, the Lord has been waiting for you. And that's why He sent me here. I'm here because he sent me to speak to you concerning him. Listen, child of God, you want to receive Jesus wherever you are. This journey of receiving your miracles starts by you receiving him as your personal servant. It's very simple. Say these words behind me. Say, Lord Jesus, I welcome you into my life. I repent my sins. Forgive me. Wash away my iniquities. And write my name in the book of life. From today, Holy Spirit of God, lead me. I confess I am a child of God. I believe I'm born again. Amen. Wow. You have just received Jesus as your personal Savior. You are a child of God. Congratulations. Praise the Lord. You are a child of God. You have just received Jesus as your personal Savior. Now, wherever you are and you are gone through an issue, you want a miracle to take place into your life. You want me to pray for you. Whatever you are, I want you to believe God with me. I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus. You can stretch your hands towards your TV. You can stretch your hands. You can hold the place that is paining you. I want to bless you. I want to speak healing to your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for my viewer. I speak life to you right now, wherever you are, in the mighty name of Jesus. I command every devil, every evil spirit, every demon out of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I cast out every demonic forces out of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing to your life, healing to your finances, healing to your family, healing to your career, healing to your marriage right now in the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle now in the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. I see someone who was on bed for so long. Stand up and walk. The Lord has just healed you. Yes, the Lord has just healed you. I speak miracles of every area of your life right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, child of God, the Lord has just visited you. The Lord has just healed you. You can still find us at Glory Church on Gatarongai. We are in between the police station and the Nafrom, opposite the new current hospital on, in Ongatarongai. We are ever there, and the Lord will visit you. Wherever you are, you can tell friends, you can tune in, and the Lord is going to bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you, child of God. The Lord keep you. The Lord watch over you. The Lord protect you. Hallelujah. You can still tune in. You can still uh, link up with me on the accounts given to you on the screen. And the Lord will be with you. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, child of God. Amen. Now, listen, child of God. I want to speak to you uh, uh, something concerning uh, the, play, the direction that the Lord is taking you and taking the church. Listen, child of God. I don't know exactly what you are feeling in the spirit, but the spirit of the Lord speaking and compelling me to speak to you this, child of God, that you cannot give up now because of the temporal situation you are in. When the Lord is coming with the permanency in your situation, when the Lord is coming to deliver you permanently from whatsoever you have been going through, there's something that I want you to follow me here. Listen, child of God. When the Israelites were in Egypt and the situation was worse, things were not working for them, the Bible says the Lord God Almighty heard their cry. You better make noise while going higher than keep quiet when going down. You can't keep quiet when things are not right today. 
you can't keep quiet when your family is not right. Listen, child of God, I tell you something today. We are living in times where by the signs that the Bible talked about concerning the coming back of Jesus, they are all here. They are all here. And only Jesus has the power and the ability to deliver you. Now, there are things you need to understand. That when you hear the word of God speaking to you, do not harden your heart. What do you need to do? You need to program your spirit man, your body, and your soul. A man is a spirit living inside a body, but he has a soul. In other words, what people are seeing right now, it's the body, but the real you is hidden in the spirit. And I want to encourage you wherever you are. You may have failed as a, in your body, but your spirit man has never failed. Your body may look weak right now. Your spirit is not weak. Listen, I want you to program yourself that no matter what. Let me use a good example of a computer. A computer has got three components. It has the, 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 the monitor. It has the, the CPU. It has also the hard drive. Now, the work of the monitor is to reflect what is in the CPU. And the work of the, of the CPU is to produce what has been installed through the hard drive or the hard disk. And therefore, whatever we see on the monitor is a condition of the CPU. Now, when your heart is programmed well, rest assured your body will behave as per the program of your heart. From today, I want you to reprogram your mind, reprogram your heart. Hallelujah. You have been there for so many years. I know people say, Pastor... I know people have prayed for me. I've been praying. I've been going to church. Listen, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Start thinking of victory. Think of the grace of God. Think of the blessing of God. Think of the goodness that the Lord is doing. Think, oh, child of God, there, there, there are many things that are happening around. There are people who have received testimony just by believing. By believing. Hallelujah. I know what you are in may have been so tough. It has, been, it has taken you long. But do you know what? The Lord has power. He is never limited by your situation. Your situation can never be compared to the ability of God to perform. And that's why he has given you what? He has given you power and authority. And the things to observe, number one, is your relationship with God. How is your relationship with God? How often do you talk to him? How often? Listen, child of God, God is your father. You don't relate to him the way you relate to your boss. He's your father. Access him, talk to him. Child of God, talk to him. He's your father. He's waiting for you. In fact, even right now, Jehovah is waiting for you. He's like, my son, when am I going to talk to you again? He's waiting for you. Child of God, hallelujah. Run to him. This is a God we serve. He is waiting for you. Child of God, he is waiting for you. Hallelujah. Approach him. Talk to him. All that you need. Amen. There's something I also want you to know in relationship. That relationship is maintained by principles. Relationship with God is maintained by principles. Number one principle is that you must believe in what the person you are friends with is talking to you about. Now, we believe in the word of God because the word of God, this word of God I'm talking about today, it is the voice of God. The voice of God is the maker of man. Hallelujah. Now, when you are in love with God, you must also remain in love with the Bible. When you are in love with God, you must also be in love with His Word. His Word is one of the key principles to maintain a relationship with Him. Number two thing you need to observe is about the blood of Jesus. Now, child of God, whenever you are watching me, maybe you are not a Christian, maybe you are a Buddhist, maybe you are a Muslim. Hello. I'm speaking to you here. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about the Savior, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Almighty God. Do you know why the blood of Jesus Christ is powerful? Listen, child of God. Sin is transferred by a man. Now, anybody born of a man has sin because he has the DNA of a father. All the other prophets, they had a biological father. That means there was a transfer of sins. Of sin from their biological father to them. Therefore, they are counted sinners. 
all the other prophets, they are great teachers. Yes, we agree. But because they had a biological father, their blood has sin. And therefore, a sinner cannot save another sinner. We have one person who never had a biological father. This man, the blood, is able to forgive you your past, your present, and your future. His name is Jesus. He never had a biological father. That's, me, that's what the Bible says. When God was cursing, uh, cursing the, the, the serpent or the devil, and when the Lord was cursing a man from the garden of Eden, he said, now Adam, your seed, the, the seed of a woman will crush the head of the serpent. And the serpent will bruise the head of the seed of a woman. Why the seed of a woman? Because the seed of a woman was Jesus. In other words, Jesus had no DNA of a man. Therefore, his blood is able to deliver you. So, as you are watching me right now, the blood of Jesus that was shed, is still speaking in your life even right now. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus is speaking to your life. He's speaking to your situation. He's speaking to you wherever you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus is speaking to you. Now, the last thing that I want you to do as you want to maintain the relationship with God, maintain a fellowship with Him. The Bible says in the book of Hebrew, chapter 10, verse 25. Let me read it for you. My Bible says, Not forsaking or neglecting assemble together as believers, as it is the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another, and all the more faithful as you see the days approaching. Do not ignore. I know there are people right now after this program, they say, hey, I've watched the man of God on TV. I've been worshiping on TV. My pastor is on TV. I don't need to go to church. Child of God, listen, after this, you go to church. You need the fellowship of other believers. The Bible encourages us to have a fellowship with other believers. The Lord encourages you to go and worship with other people wherever they are. Hallelujah. The Lord is encouraging you to go and worship with other people. You need the fellowship, the warm fellowship. You need to hear the word of God from your pastor. You need to listen to him, to the man of God. You need to hear what the God is saying concerning your life through him. Because he's a God-sent angel to you. Men of God are God's gift to the body of Christ. They have been sent to us by him for a purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For a purpose. Therefore, I speak to each other of God wherever where we are right now. That as you, and you go to church today, you testify. I know some of you right now, as you are watching, you have been healed. I know some of you are feeling much better. You can do, try do, to do what you could not do before. Because I feel the power of the Almighty touching you wherever you are. And as you have received your healing today, you go and testify of the doing of the Lord. Hallelujah. I see someone who has been having a problem with the backache for so long. The Lord is healing you and delivering you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I see someone who has been looking at his warning letter that he is scared he's a man he's a man he's scared of losing his job listen child of god the lord is giving you another opportunity in the mighty name of jesus christ in the mighty name of jesus christ i see a family going through a cycle of issues from one place to another issues issues in life I see a family revolving around some issues. Listen, child of God, the Lord is coming for your deliverance. You are being delivered right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I see people struggling with debts, debts from every corner. You don't know how to come out of them. I speak life to you right now. That the Lord is coming for your rescue in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord is speaking to me of a relationship that has been at the verge of breaking and separating and hurting. Listen, child of God, the Lord understands what you have been through. Don't give up yet. Trust and believe in Him for your deliverance. Hallelujah. I speak life to this country, to this nation, Kenya. I speak life to a forthcoming election in this country. Don't be scared. The Lord is right here. And our borders are protected by the blood of Jesus. I speak life to that lady who has been looking for a child for so long. I command your womb to be open right now in the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. 
receive your miracle receive your miracle in the mighty name of Jesus the Lord is giving you a child in the mighty name of Jesus testimonies are coming testimonies are coming testimonies are coming you can get our details from the TV that you're watching right now and be able to communicate to me I see testimonies coming in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus your miracle is coming on your way in your house in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I see a family that has been looking for their loved one who got lost many years ago you don't know where the person is the Lord is speaking to me right now in the name of Jesus they are being brought back to your life in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Jesus is visiting your family again new joy is being released to your family joy is being released to your family in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus you are on a journey and you just stopped purpose to listen to this word I speak life to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus I speak life to your children I speak life to your family members in the mighty name of Jesus now the Lord is causing a shift in your spirit in your life if you have received a miracle you can keep texting you can send uh, you, you can send a word to us via our pages you see online you can communicate to us you can visit the miracle TV you can visit the miracle TV and confirm with them of what the Lord has done to you hallelujah the Lord is delivering you I see testimonies from everywhere I see testimony from everywhere hallelujah we thank Jesus thank you for those testimonies you're sending thank you for the miracles that are taking place thank you for all that is happening in your life and in your family your life can never be the same hallelujah hallelujah it can't be otherwise amen amen I see miracles taking place in your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus you can make this station your friend because life is coming to you from right here to deliver you from all that you have been through for so long wow it has been wonderful talking to you speaking to you ministering the word of god to you today hallelujah i'm so excited i have to go but listen if you're living around rongai area let us meet in the church the word of god is there we're having a triple s service right now short sharp and sweet and the lord shall visit you in jesus name hallelujah so uh, uh as we are meeting there i'm looking forward to see you looking forward to meet you wherever we are having a meeting coming soon in Ruaraka follow my page Facebook page and watch out for the adverts um, there's a big meeting coming soon in Bible in Bible uh, Treat Church in Ruaraka somewhere there and uh, the Lord will be visiting so when you go to my page you'll see all the adverts there and the Lord is going to bless you from next week the Lord is visiting you in a special way hallelujah God bless you God keep you live long in the miracles of Almighty Amen, amen, amen. Shalom. God bless you.